So cool. Hey guys, Zeke here. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we are going to break down this super cinematic EOS M rig that I put together. It reminds me a bit of the Red Cinema camera. I'm going to break down every individual component that I'm using, the monitor, the light, the battery, the mirror, the handle, all that good stuff. I'm going to break it down for you guys, take what you can, and I'll also be going through the settings that I would use with Magic Lantern Raw and monitors. So stick around for that. But right now, let's break down the equipment that I'm using and see what it's all about. Let's go. All right, guys, here's my Canon M all rigged up. And this just reminds me of the red digital cinema camera, which I absolutely love. So I'm gonna break down every single component that I'm using and hopefully you guys will get something out of this. Now here is the Canon US M. You can see how small this is. I have a few more of these and they are absolutely beautiful. The red one is my favorite, um, obviously because of the color and it's just a bit rare to get, I find. So here it is in my hand. You can see how tiny it is, a small point and shoot camera. This is not gonna get the job done and the field when you're shooting video. It is way too light. It weighs 230 grams and you're just gonna get shaky footage out in the field from testing. So building it up something like this is just lots of fun. It's like playing with Lego. It's just absolutely beautiful. It gets the job done, um, especially when you wanna eliminate that shaky footage um, going on when you're using smaller bodies. Okay, so first things first, let's take a look at the brain of this whole entire rig, uh, which is the cage. This is made by Camvate. It's a half cage, so you're not gonna get like the grip on the side, and that means you're gonna have to go over and fetch your own grip online, uh, which might be a bit of a nuisance to some people, but I feel like it's the best move because you have more control over what grip fits your hand better. And we'll go over that in a second. Now with this cage, it has quarter inch threads, so you can mount different things to the side, to the top, underneath. Uh, it's very important. So this is a Canvate cage and it costs 20 to 30 bucks, super cheap. On the bottom of this rig, I have a small rig mounting plate. This thing costs around 20 bucks and you have two 15 mil rod holes. So you can attach your rods, put some focus gears, map box, whatever you need. Uh, this thing is just gonna get the job done. And then on the back, I've done something a bit cheeky. I've put a small rig monitor mount, which is supposed to go on the top to attach monitors on the back of this base plate. And what this does with this smartphone clamp made by Manfrotto is allow you to, you know, move the power bank that I have on here up and down. You can attach different things, whatever you need, but this just allows me to, to tap on my screen and access the menu. Now you're probably looking at this cable and you're like, whoa, what is that? This is a DRE12, which is the battery that the USM takes. It's a dummy adapter. So you have this cable, it plugs into the fake adapter and then it coils around, it powers onto this power bank, which is made by Jupio. It's the Jupio Power Vault 3 PD, and I made a video about this power bank. It's 10,000 milliamps. It works absolute wonders. I have to say, even after the review, I'm still extremely happy with it, and I'm gonna purchase more of these. It's apparently the smallest or the lightest power bank for the 10,000 milliamp range, and it has not failed me yet whatsoever. So highly recommend this guy right here if you're looking for a portable power bank for your camera. Now on the back here, you can see that I have a vlogging mirror. Now you're probably thinking, why the heck is this up here if you have a monitor in front? So the reason why I would use this is if I'm not using the monitor. If I'm not using the monitor, I'll just take it off and use this guy instead if I'm just holding it with a vlogging stick or something like that. If I just want to vlog and see myself as a reference, then I'll chuck on the uh, vlogging mirror made by Nicey Rig. It's got a hot shoe adapter at the top and you just slide it in the hot shoe of your camera and you are ready to rock and roll, get that vlogging going. And this thing is an absolute lifesaver for the EOS M. You have no flip out screen, you can't see yourself. And without using any batteries or any power, you just place this on top and then I can record myself nice and easy. Now we all know the EOS M is not the best in low light situations. And this Amaran here made by Aperture works absolute wonders. It's the ALM9. And this guy right here, I've had for more than a year. It's never let me down. It lasts for a really long time. It has a switch here on the side. You just press on and you have your minus and plus buttons. So if I press the minus, then obviously it's gonna go down to its lowest setting. Press the plus and it'll go to its peak brightness there. I can record myself like this, get that nice lighting going, especially for the Canon US M, uh, which hasn't got really great low light capabilities. So having this on the side here when you're shooting out in low light, just works absolute wonders. They say that any light is better than no light. And I did take this out with my Sony ZV-10. This was out in New Year's Eve when there was only street lights available and I needed to capture content. So this aperture light just came in handy. And as you can see, it did a fabulous job. 
It's not a bicolor light, so you can't change the Kelvin whatsoever, but it does come with sheets where you can just slide them in, clamp them on, and you can increase the warmth of this light. Now on the right here, I have a grip, and I have to say that this is a really important part of the rig. I own Ari grips, I own metal ones made by Small Rig, and then this one by Tilter. And I have to say, these are really important for getting that nice stabilized footage. Without these, the camera is sort of unbalanced, and it just feels a bit awkward when I'm shooting on the field. So having a normal size grip for your hand is just gonna make all the difference. Now, like I said, it's made by Tilter. It costs around hundred bucks if you can find them online. Um, it doesn't have to be this particular grip. There's lots of them out there made by Ari or even Small Rig if you want the cheaper versions. Uh, but this is an Ari Rosette mount adapter. And as you can see, I've screwed it onto the cage. It's only a half cage, uh, but with this adapter, I can now screw on my Ari mount grips. It has a locking mechanism up here, so I can just rotate it, take the grip off, put another one if I have to. Uh, but this one right here feels the most comfortable that I've ever felt. And it just looks like a red digital cinema camera. So if you're looking for a good quality one, then the Tilter one here is the one that I recommend. Okay, so now we're up to the last part of this rig. And as you can see, I'm using a right angled coiled HDMI cable. It's the HDMI mini to HDMI full. And this guy right here, my friend, works absolute wonders. The right angle just provides much better support, um, especially if I'm actually gonna hit it against something, it won't break. It's much more protected this way. And the coil, you know, you don't get frayed wires. It just coils nicely around. And I can attach this around and get a nice supportive mount on top. So in terms of the mount, this is a small rig two ball head point mount. And cost like what 10 bucks I mean the other small rig mounts cost like 60 to 70 bucks and they don't come cheap so if you want a cheaper solution then you can get this small rig ball point head and it does the job it's flexible you can rotate in different ways you can mount on the side on the top of the camera wherever you need it just works fantastic now I do own a lot of monitors but the one on top here I have the Fuelworld F6 plus it's 5.5 inch and the reason why I'm using this is because it has a quarter inch thread on the side as well as the top. So you can put a cold shoe adapter here and you can put your microphones on the top or on the side. It's just completely flexible. Uh, you've also got a 8.4 volt DC. So you can power your camera via this monitor, which is fantastic. Now, is this the best monitor out there? No, it is touch screen. So if I wanna record myself, I can pinch to zoom. You don't have much buttons on the top. So if you wanna enable your settings, then you have to do that via touch. And that's pretty much it. I mean, the monitor mount on top, you can see how strong and rigid that is. That's absolutely immovable. It's got a lock here, so you can tighten it how strong you want it to be. But overall, this is it. This is how you set it up. Okay, so they're pretty much all the components that I use with the Canon US M to create this whole rig. And it feels comfortable out in the field. I can see myself if I have to use a monitor, I can use lighting for low light situations. So I'm pretty much all covered here. It's a fantastic little rig. Right now, we're gonna head over to the monitor area and we're gonna check out the best settings for Magic Lantern Raw on the Canon US M. Let's go. All right guys, here I have the Canon US M. It's all set up, HDMI's in, and I've got the Fieldworld F6 Plus. So I'm gonna go through the settings that I would set up and show you the best settings that will work with the Canon US M. So let's go into the trash can, check the menu, tab three. This is the movie mode where you can access the presets right at the top here, click set, and then you have all these modes that you can choose from. So I'm gonna go through each of these and I'm gonna say which one will work with monitors and which ones will not and cause issues. So. HD 1080, that will work absolutely fine. It didn't used to, you would get some dropped frames here and there, uh, but HD 1080 has been absolutely solid for me uh, with no issues. So I'm gonna click set over here. And if you do choose to shoot with HDMI monitors in HD mode, uh, don't enable this FPS override. It's gonna cause some issues, especially if you're gonna you know, increase the FPS. So just disable that, shutter lock, disable, shutter fine tuning, disable. You don't want FPS override or shutter fine tuning on if you're gonna use monitors. Now, if you're unsure of your FPS, just go over here and it'll actually confirm which FPS you are on. So 23.972 is what I'm recording right now. And that's absolutely fine in the 1080 HD mode. Now people ask if you can get continuous recording and it's going green and it says continuous recording okay. All right, so presets 1080 is absolutely fine. This one down here, HD 30 FPS, 46 or 38 FPS, 
that is a no-go for monitors. Anything high frame rate is just not going to work well with monitors. 2.5K one-to-one centered, no, that's not going to work fine. 2.5K, no. Pretty much any high resolution, you're going to come across issues when using monitors. And there is one exception, and I'll show you that in a second. 3K, no. 4K, no. 5K anamorphic or FLV down the bottom here. These two are absolutely fine because 5K is not one-to-one. -one. It's not the real 5K resolution. This is just like an upscale. It's about HD-ish quality. Um, so this works absolutely fine. You have accurate preview on your monitor. So this is one that I would recommend alongside 1080. Down over here, 2.8K, no, it is a high resolution. You can lower it to around 2.3K or 2.2K. Uh, but in general, this is going to come across issues. You don't get the exact live view. So you, what you see is not what you get. It's a bit cropped in. So that's something to take in mind. 2.5K one-to-one centered FRTP. No, this is not going to work. This is actually a mode I use without the monitors. Okay, so if you're going to shoot high resolution mode with your monitors, 2.5K one-to-one -one centered HDMI is an absolute beast, um, especially if you're using wide lenses with stabilization and where you want to get more resolution and reduced aliasing and moire. 2.5K one-to-one -one centered HDMI is the mode that I always choose when using monitors. So press set and if you press the menu button, you'll see it loading up. Okay, so what you can see is a pink and white screen, and this is because it's an HDMI specific mode. So the developer just configured this mode to work with monitors only, not the live view. So with this, I have the HDMI cable plugs into my F6 Plus by Feelworld, and we're gonna switch it on, and I'll show you how to get this thing up and running. All right, to turn this monitor on, you just gotta hold the power button on the top left, and then it goes green. And you can see the live view screen is now black and the monitor is up and running. So you can't access Magic Lantern from the touch screen, unfortunately. So just hold the trash can button down and then you can see that you can access it from the Canon in itself. So the preset or the mode is 2.5K one-to-one -one centered HDMI. And if I go down at the bottom, you can see my resolution is 1736 by 976. Now we do want around 2.5K, so I can just increase that and you can see the aspect ratio changing up here. All right, so I'm getting to around 2.33 to one. And if I go back into this, you can still see that it's 2.33 to one. It's not 2.35 to one. So in order to get that, just go to ratio and select 2.35 to one, which will override the aspect ratio. There you go, 2.35 to one. And 2520 by 1072. Press the menu button and I'll show you what's going to happen. That's going to happen. It still stays here. It's like a frozen frame. And the reason for this frozen frame is because the developer has only utilized this section of the sensor. So anything outside here of the frame is going to be frozen or black. Now it can look quite ugly. So in order to cover that, what you can do is go to the overlay tabs, select crop marks, and we are shooting 2.35 to 1. So just set bitmap to 2.35 to 1, and you can also show that in photo mode if you need. Press the menu button, and you'll see it just close up, just like that. So if you're looking at your monitor, you only get a small portion of your screen, but it's better than having the full screen and super cropped with the incorrect framing. So at least this is the correct framing. It is small, but this is like the best that you can get for high resolution modes and monitors with absolutely zero dropped frames so let's acquire focus there you go out of focus and then i'm back in focus so this is a 7 artisans 12 mil f 2.8 i'm going to do a review on it uh soon or when i get the chance but look at that i don't have to press info button to check my real framing from the cropped live view what i see is what i get now i know that some of you don't like this box so what you can do with these touchscreen monitors is actually zoom in like that and then just move it around until you actually have it as your full screen, uh, which is pretty hilarious. Uh, but it just works, really. I know you lose the information down here, but if you just remember what they are, then, you know, there you go. You have something that's full screen and works absolutely fantastic. So I've hit record and I'll see how we go. Now, high resolution modes, you don't get continuous recording. Uh, you'll have to reduce the resolution a little bit um, in order to get more record time or until it says continuous is okay. So 2.35 to one, 2.5K raw, 
you can see that I'm shooting more than 17 seconds, now more than 20 seconds. So I am indoors and if you're outdoor and you have lots of light, then the recording will stop more quicker because light is coming to this sensor. And there you go, it's just stopped. I think that was around 25 or 30 seconds, uh, but you know, you can reduce resolution to get more record time if you need to. So let's check that out. If I go into the resolution section, I can see that ratio is 2.35 to one. If I do 16 by nine, you can see that you have 1920 by 1080 and that's continuous. It has a green light signal and you can record as long as you like 1920 by 1080. So if I press the menu button, there you go. This is 1920 by 1080 resolution. If you want to double check, just go back in and you can see 1920 by 1080. I'm still getting a nice field of view because this lens is wide. And there you go. I can pan my shots. I can record for as long as I like because I'm getting the green signal here. If it ever drops, it must be your card. I'm recording with this SanDisk Extreme Pro. Absolutely reliable card. It's 512 gig. You don't need that capacity. I just have it around in case, you know, I have multiple shoots and I need as much capacity as possible. So there you go, the green light signal whole way through, 2.5K HDMI centered. It's the real live view and this is the mode of choice if you want high resolution and monitor use. Okay, so that's pretty much it. They're the settings that I use with the monitor and the EOS M and these are all the equipment, the accessories that I use to get this cinematic rig up and running. If you enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.